Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Let the Lord be magnified today. Oh, we worship you, God. We give you the glory. We give you the praise because you're worthy, oh God. Oh, we just cry, holy, holy, holy are you, oh God. Father God, we pray this morning that you come in, oh God. Oh, Lord God, we ask that you just sup with us this morning, oh God. Oh, Lord God, as the rain falls, oh God. We ask, oh Lord God, that your spirit fall upon us this morning, oh God. Oh, Lord God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, oh God, for every ear and for every heart, oh God. Oh, God, not only in the sanctuary, Lord God, but we pray for everyone, Lord God, that's on Facebook and whatever other, Lord God, social media that we own, oh God. Father God, I pray and I just thank you, Lord God, that there's a supernatural, hallelujah, supernatural thing that's going to happen this morning, oh God. I thank and I praise the Lord God that it, it belongs to you this morning. Oh Lord God, it all belongs to you, oh God. Lord God, I pray that we'll decrease so that you will increase in us, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, that anything, Lord God, will be to your pleasing, oh God. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. And Lord God, I ask that you, Lord God, just bless everyone here, oh God. Bless the man of God that's going to give the word.
just say, I, I just want you. Nothing else matters. In the pain, we just. While we're grieving, we just.
so as I walk through the church, not able to describe what I'm going through, I simply say, Lord, you know my name. So Lord, if you know my name, and when I read that you can count the number of hairs on my head, that means before I even ask something, you already know what it is. And so God, because you know our name this morning, you know that daughter's name. You know the person's name who's in the hospital right now. You even know the name of the person we lost. But God, in the midst of all of that, you know my name. So praise team, can y'all can y'all help us?
is an awesome God. But as we come before you right now, God, let me decrease that you may increase. Allow the spirit of the Almighty God to red rampant in this place. Because God, we understand. Call on him 
while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. The time's mind, I want to simply preach the topic of new opportunity. A new opportunity. Brothers and sisters, as we begin to understand, there are a lot of things that have happened in our lives. There are a lot of times in life where we don't literally get a second chance with other folks. Matter of fact, even when folks tell us they forgive us, they still hold grudges. There are times when people tell you that they are past certain things only to bring them up in the heated discussions. There are times in life when we felt that wounds should be healed, but understand only under the surface they're worse before they started. So sometimes in life we have to remind ourselves how is it that we are able to give others opportunities? And how is it that we want opportunities from other folks? In this text, it teaches us what an opportunity looks like. Sometimes I'm sorry does not seem to be enough. Sometimes I apologize don't seem to be enough. Because those words should have different meanings this time. Sometimes, to be honest with you, a lot of us, if not all of us, have done some things that we were sorry for, but we find ourselves doing it again. again. Ah. What is it that makes us do something over and over and over again? Is it the thrill? Is it the chase? Is it something that makes us do it again? The definition for addiction is something to do over and over again. But it's amazing to me how we as individuals, when we look at drug addiction, alcohol addiction, we shine a light and, and talk about those different addictions because it is simply a person who cannot stop doing what they're doing. One addiction is not worse than the other because anytime that you put something before anything else, it is something that needs to be worked on. What do I do to gain another opportunity, a new opportunity in life and what that opportunity looks like is in this particular text. How is it, Pastor Newman, that in 2021, here we are still on the last day of the month. I really want to get it right this year because previous years, I, I didn't get it right. I'm sorry. Even in 2020, COVID may have masked a lot of stuff, but there was still a lot of stuff going on. I may hide behind a mask, but I'm still cussing folks out. I, I, I may have on shields and goggles, but I still roll my eyes. I, I probably have to be six feet from somebody, but I'm, I'm still feeling the same way. I, I, I just want to be truthful because this time I want it to be right. Bring it up. Be right. So what can I do to gain a new opportunity because I understand these days and times, when we used to go to funerals, there used to be people who were Sister Tyson's age in their 90s or Hank Aaron age in their 80s, but now we're going to funerals of babies and teenagers and young adults. Now it does not matter what the age is, and death is around us. What can I do to get a new opportunity before it comes knocking? And by no, the text teaches us today it says, Seek the Lord. While he may be found. Number one, to gain a new opportunity. Number one, oh my God, you number one, you gotta dedicate yourself. And there has to be some dedication. Dedicate yourself. That means that you are dedicated to make sure that this relationship is the best relationship with God. That, that this relationship won't be like a, your, your relationship with humanity. That there has to be something different between divinity and humanity. There has to be a dedication. That means that you have to worship God in spirit and in truth. You can't play with God. You've got to be dedicated. Short of late, that ain't dedicated. Short of uh, uh, when other folks tell you to sometimes when you dedicate it, you've got to have a mind that I'm going to do it if I got to do it by myself. In 2021, you're going to do a whole lot of things by yourself. You can't wait for the crowd because when you dedicate it to something, oh my God, can I 
tell you why, what I like. Those of those who may not like LeBron James, you may not like Michael Jordan, you may not like Magic Johnson, you may not like Larry Bird. There are a whole lot of players you may like. You got your pick and choose. But one thing all of them have in common was, and when you take the time to find out how did they become so great, it's because they were dedicated. When you find out, they were always the first one to get the practice. They were always the one last one to leave. They had a key to the building. They had light to where the lights were. Because even when everybody was going home, they were still making jump shots. And Magic Johnson was asked a question one time, how many jump shots do you take a day? He said, I found out how many Larry Bird was shooting, and I shot twice as many. He said, I was dedicated to do those type things because I wanted to be on the top of my game. Brothers and sisters, how is it that we can't be dedicated? We got demons that stand in their places and leaving the lights on, and they still trying to get up, but we want to go home and take a nap. No, no, no. You got to be just as dedicated and not more dedicated than the demons in hell. You got to seek the Lord where he may be found. When other folks get up on their knees, you ain't got to get up. You got to stay down on your knees. When other folks fast stop, that means your fast got to get a little bit longer. When other folks stop praising, worshiping, I don't care if the music stop, you ought to still be right. It's not like anybody in Snow well, anybody on Facebook that made up in their mind that in 2021, I'm going to be more dedicated to Be dedicated. I'll be so dedicated that it does not matter if it's a fifth Sunday. I have God don't take no day off. Why should I? I'm going to still give God praise. I'm still going to give God glory. What does dedicated mean? It means you got to be devoted. Come on now. It means you got to be devoted to your worship, devoted to who you are. And we can talk about we can talk about all the other religions. We can talk about our God is a true God. He's the only way to truth and the life. I truly believe that. But when you look at the prayer life of Muslims, when you look at the prayer life of Hindus, when you look at the prayer life of other religions, they pray five, six times a day. We want to pray five minutes and thank God that God. No, no, no. Sometimes you got to lay before the Lord. The Bible talks about prostration, which means, oh my God, I hope y'all get this, that there are different postures and positions in prayer. Uh, on your knees ain't the only way you need to pray. Sometimes you got to lay on your face. There was time when David was catching hell on all sides. David bypassed his knees and he laid his face on the ground. In 2021, you got to bypass the bad knees and lay on the ground prostrate and say, Father, it's me, it's me standing in the need of prayer. Is there anybody going to be dedicated to the Lord because you need a new opportunity? You've been going through so much and you're tired of the same thing. You're tired of the same feeling. You're tired of the same folks. But sometimes in your life, you've got to say, Lord, I'm dedicated to you. Is there any dedicated vessels in the house of the Lord? Is there any dedicated vessels on Facebook? You ought to blow your head back and say, Lord, I want to dedicate this day to you. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. When you open up your eyes in the morning, you ought to say, Lord, I dedicate my life to you. Be pleased with my walk. Be pleased with my talk. Be pleased with my frame of mind. I want to dedicate not just one day, but my life to you. I dare to give your life to the Lord. Lord, I dedicate you. Strange. It's strange. And when we had the church, we do dedication services saying this house is dedicated to the Lord. But it's amazing to me that we can give the house to the Lord. But we don't want to give the people that's in the house to the Lord. Can I help you that sometimes in our life, we've got to make up in our minds, brothers and sisters, that I'm glad that Joshua, around the 24th chapter, Joshua dedicates his house to the Lord. He says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He says, Lord, because I'm the shepherd of my house, I'm dedicating my house to you. Not only am I dedicating my house, but I'm dedicating my spouse, and I'm dedicating my children. Whether, whether ever they go, I'm still giving them to you. Whoever they hang around, I'm still giving them to you. Because they may be saved in our eyes, but we don't know what they do on the outside. So Lord, I'm dedicating them to you.
to you. Is there anybody in the house that's going to dedicate everything that belongs to you? You may not like the car you drive, but you ought to dedicate it to the Lord. Because when it belongs to the Lord, when it want to cut off on you, it won't cut off on him. When you ought to dedicate your finances to the Lord, because when the check want to bounce somewhere else, he'll make it fine and go through. You ought to give God a praise because you're going to dedicate your stuff. You're going to dedicate your mind. You're going to dedicate your words to the Lord. Do I have the dedicated people in the house today? Do I have the dedicated people on Facebook today? I day to hit dedicate, dedicate, dedicate. Lord, dedicate my mind, dedicate my heart, dedicate my body, dedicate my praise, dedicate my worship, dedicate my way, dedicate my stuff, dedicate my job. Is there anybody in the house that said, Lord, take all of me? Oh, one, have a new opportunity, another chance in the Lord. That's what our opportunity is, another chance. Number one, you got to dedicate yourself. And this answer this in the text. It says, when he may be found, call on him while he is near. That's dedication. But look what it says. Look what it says. Look what it says. It says, let the wicked that forsake their ways and their unrighteousness, their thought. Let them, oh my God, I like this. Let them, let them forsake their ways and, uh, of the, and also their thoughts. What they're saying is, number one, you got to dedicate but number two, you got to distance yourself right there. Because what it's saying is when you become, when you dedicate yourself, that means you have to distance from yourself from folks who are not dedicated. That means that you've got to get around like-minded people. That's why the Bible says, let me help y'all with this. The popularity of the dedicated ain't that big. Bring it up. The popularity of the dedicated is not that big, that large. What do you mean, Pastor? How can you tell me that the, the population of the dedicated is not that large? How can you tell me it's not that big? I'm glad y'all asked the question. Because the Bible tells you what two or three are gathered together in my name. He's letting you know already it may not be that many dedicated people. And what he says, he didn't say two or three thousand. But he says, well, two or three are gathered in the midst. And you're dedicated. He said, that's why I'll show up sometime in your life. You can't worry about numbers. But you got to worry about the Lord showing up. And sometime in your life, what he's trying to tell you is you got to distance yourself a little bit. Get away from the little folks and move them from unrighteousness. Look what he says. He said their ways and their thoughts. See, what I like about the text is it's letting you know that wicked folks got some ways. They got some ways and they handle some things. And if you know it don't agree with your ways, but the Bible is trying to tell you because you're dedicated, I'll give you some sight to be able to see what they're doing. Not only that, he said the unrighteous, their thoughts. We know you can't see a thought, but there ought to be something about somebody that you ought to see that just ain't right. Is there anybody in the house that if you want an opportunity with the Lord, you got to stand up hanging around folks that don't want an opportunity. You got to stop fooling with folks that don't want to be to the Lord. The closer you get to the Lord, the further they get away. And sometimes God will put you in the middle between him and them. And last couple of years, we've been choosing them because they like to the party. We've been choosing them because they like to do things. But God says, if you choose me, I won't just give you a fad. I won't just give you a trend. Is there anybody in the house to say, I got to distance myself? That if I got to walk by myself, as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. Tell him I'm headed to the Lord. He will walk with me. He will talk with me. He will call me his own. Time. Time to uh, there are times when I was a firefighter. Uh, there were times when people were in a tough situation. And we would pull up. They would be holding on to something that was going to be stuck in that situation. They would be holding on to a branch. They would be holding on to a piece of something. And when we got there, we had to tell them, in order for you to live, you got to let go and trust me. There were a lot of us that's holding on to some folks. And they trying to take you down. And you've been praying, Lord, rescue me. Lord, come see about me. And when the Lord shows up, what he's trying to tell you is you got to let go. You got to distance yourself from something that's going to take you down. You got to distance yourself from a surrounding that's about to kill you. You got to let go and let God. Is there anybody in the house that's going to 
Somebody says, what was it? Start what? What was it? So I look at that. See, see, she already knows. Start six, seven. <laughs> well, start six, seven. Start six, six, seven. Start six, nine. Which one? Or whatever it was. You should push star six, seven. Start six, nine. That, that looks so different. Right. Get me right. Get me right. Uh, so start six, seven. Give you the private call. But start six, nine. Block somebody. So what happened is, you can push these two numbers. And because uh, there were times in life you made up in your mind that you were fed up with what this person was telling you. And whoever created the ball line said, that's some stuff that you ain't just got to put up with. That any time that you see this number, all you got to do is dial those, hit those three buttons, and they won't be able to get through. What they called it then, what they called it the block. And when you got your cell phone now, there's a big red button on the bottom of your phone that says block this call. What is trying to tell you is that the moment you hit this button, you are distancing yourself from the folks. Why would you allow folks to come and get in your spirit when you got the power to block them? You got the power to distance them. Well, if the land had that power, and if the cell phone had that power, don't you know the saints of God got the same power? What God is trying to tell you, if you want a new opportunity, you got to block the folks out your life. Block them on that. Block them at 2 in the morning. Block them at 3 in the morning. Block them. I need to throw your head back and say block. Block them out. Because God wants you to put some distance between them and Him. Tell God, I'm unblocking you while I block them. Come on, if you're going to block some folks, go ahead and give God a break. Some of them got to be family. Oh my God. See, I, I want y'all to get this. You can't even. 
people go the same way you used to go. You got to find another alternative route because they know what time you pass their house. You already know what time they go to lunch. They already know how to pass you by. They know where you're going to be at three times, three o'clock every day. They know you're going to stop by your mama house. They know you're going to go over to Big Chicken and get your two-piece snack. They know you're going to hang around your sister girl high fried and call. But some days you ought to switch it up instead of going to mama house on Monday. You ought to go to mama house on Friday. Instead of getting your chicken on Tuesday, you ought to get it on Thursday so they can be looking for you. And when they try to reach you and say, where you been? Because, hold on, hold on. You don't know where to block with the lock. And they can't get to you. So they got to send word to you where you been. I want you to tell the person, the messenger that bring you that food is just say, just tell them I deviated my plans. Don't be looking for me because I changed my location. Ready to deviate? That means you're about to detour from the place you used to go. I don't care how close you get to the house. You ought to deviate at the main highway. I don't care how close it gets to you. If you're going at the same aisle in Walmart, you ought to push the reverse button on your money and go a whole other way. You're going to deviate yourself and say, Lord, I'm turning to you. The Bible says turn from your wicked ways. Sometimes you got to turn deviate your direction and say, Lord, here I am. Show me where you want me to go. Is there anybody going to deviate? The says, turn. What I like about it is he didn't leave that up to surprise the circumstances. He told you who to turn to. Sometimes in our life we've been turning to the wrong people. Right. Yeah, people, let me help y'all. People will attack your vulnerability. Amen. They know where you're hurting. Oh, yeah. They know what you're missing. Come on. They know where you're lacking. And can I tell you, it's not a divine order how they know. It's because you trust them enough to tell them what's going on. Yeah. You tell them what your spouse is not doing. You tell them what your boyfriend is not doing. You tell them what your children's not doing. You tell them that you ain't getting child support on the first of every month. And they bring you twenty dollars by them because you say twenty dollars is better than nothing. And you think that you got the best things since sliced bread. Let me help you. That twenty dollar they gave you, they ain't even paying their own child support. And you sit there talking about I got a good one this time. No, no, no. You got to turn from them. And because the last time I checked, the Lord will supply all your needs according to his riches. God got a distance, you got to deviate. Oh my God. Look what he says. He says, he says, and he will, oh, I like this part, I want y'all to get this. Here comes that new opportunity to come. And he will, God, have mercy, have mercy. on them. Hold on. Can I put a pin in there for a moment? I get tired of people telling me uh, in the Old Testament, God was not merciful. God was straight to the point. We done got mixed up with this grace in the New Testament. God didn't have that much grace in the Old Testament. The devil is a lie. God had more grace in the Old Testament than he ever had in the New Testament. Can I break it down to y'all? The children of Israel came out of Egypt. He brought them out of Egypt. told them to leave their gods there. They brought their gods with them. When Moses went to the mountain of Mount Sinai, they built a calf. God allowed them to destroy the calf, but he still kept providing for them. Don't you tell me God does not have grace. Come here for a minute, David. David, you took this man wife, killed that man husband, woman's husband, all those things, and you prayed to God, God still had grace on you. So don't you dare tell me God ain't got grace. God had grace in the Old Testament, and God got grace in the New Testament. The problem with all of us is we're abusing the grace that God gave us. Sometimes you got to take grace as well and say, God, thank you for loving me. I can't do that. Thank you for another opportunity. Thank you for another I don't know about you, but we ought to shout for a moment for grace. I don't know about y'all, but do you, oh my God, do you not understand? Do you not understand how much grace? You couldn't even, you couldn't even, oh my God, how many of y'all, God, are told for something? How many of y'all 
you know, you don't even know how you got home sometimes, but God did. You don't even know how you woke up in the dangerous place you were and you survived. You, you, you have no idea who bed you woke up in. You don't know if they had coronavirus or AIDS, but God kept you in your foolishness. Sometimes you got to shout, not on the stuff that God is doing, but what God that already did for you in your life. I shout up what God did for me in my What he did? New opportunity, no, he says, you have mercy on them. Oh my God. And our God, and to our God, he will freely pardon. Pardon. Can't, can't talk about that, number one. Dedicate number two, this number three, and deviate. Uh, when you see the word pardon, we, we think of presidential pardon because uh, the presidents have power to pardon uh, uh, criminals or those who have been accused of a crime when they are in office or when they leave. Most of them, when they leave, they do that. We talk about President Trump, but every president has has uh, pardoned some people uh, along the way. And when you take time to find out, it started with George Washington. Every time, every time a president leaves office, they pardon somebody, which means that they have been convicted by a court. They have been convicted of a crime, and they are now serving their punishment in, oh my God, I'm about to shout. They're now serving their punishment in prison. But what a part does, what a part does, it excuses and eliminates the punishment that you should be facing. Which means all the stuff you did, when a part comes on, it wipes out everything and they, oh my God, they have to let you go. Oh my God. Do you know that sin is a crime to God? And all the stuff that we do is a crime to God.
you distanced yourself and you did something different this time in your direction, deliverance is on the way. I truly believe by faith on this day. Come on, come on and say, come on, come on. A wonderful. And yes, it has, yes, it has. I want y'all to keep saying it. 
if you're ready for a change to happen in your life, the first way you show your dedication is by sowing a seed right now. How can you do that? How can you sow a seed? You can do it by tithing. You can do it by giving by. You can do it by giving. Also, you can do it uh, by mailing it to us at 1552 Thomason, Georgia 30286. You can drop it by our mail slot as well. Come on right now. Come on and show right now. If you know God is giving you another opportunity, this is your opportunity to give. This is your opportunity to show right now. Most importantly, when we do those three things, 
your pardoning power comes. That means that you're going to deliver, deliver us, set us free. So now, God, it feels so good to understand the text that says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom. So now, God, let us freely give our seed. Let us freely give our lives. In Jesus' name, we do pray. And every heart said, amen, amen, amen. God bless you on this day. We thank you for the seeds that you're sowing right now. We thank you for the blessings that you're giving us right now. We thank you for those who became a part of our family. We thank you for that as well. We welcome you with open arms on behalf of me, First Lady, Sister Dumas, Coleman, Carmen, Kaylee, and I just know what they We say welcome to our family. God bless you. God keep you. We love you and understand that you have a new opportunity coming your way. God bless you. We love you.